a good conversationalist? It has been said that a good conversationalist is one who doesn't merely talk, but one who asks good questions. Also, the true mark of a good interviewer is that of insightful questions. A good doctor knows what questions to ask when diagnosing a condition. The art of asking questions, that's really what it is, an art. Socrates was so good at it that he has a system named after him, the Socratic system. That is, one in which truth is found by a continual asking of questions to stimulate critical thinking and to illuminate ideas. These aren't meant as third degree or interrogation methods, but those which peel back the layers of the unknown until the truth is arrived at. Jesus used questions to get those whom he was confronting to come up with answers for themselves, rather than give them what they wanted. When he told the parable of the Good Samaritan, he asked the lawyer who proved to be the neighbor, so that he could reason for himself. When Jesus wanted his disciples to confess who he was, he asked them who other people thought he was. Then he asked them. Jesus asked pointed questions that we all must consider now, though it is two thousand years after they have been asked. Can any of you by worrying add a single moment to your lifespan? Why do you doubt? Do you realize what I have done for you? When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? These and many more are designed to stimulate our thoughts and touch our hearts. The next time you read the Gospels, treat those questions Jesus asked others as if he were asking you. It is there you may find a deeper truth. Places on a Map in a world where we are becoming more and more dependent on technology to do our figuring out, it may be a sure thing we will be less likely to do the digging it takes to understand our Bibles when it comes to geography. Admittedly, our understanding of ancient geography is scant at best. We are not only stymied by ancient boundaries and borders that have changed hands countless times, but by the language barrier. Most Bibles come with some sort of map or maps as a reference. Many will have maps that depict the Holy Lands through the ages. The trouble is, these maps are in the back and not in front of us when we read. They can be hard to read if too many names are listed, much the same way we read our modern atlases. This is especially true when it comes to Old Testament passages like Joshua and Judges that list a host of towns, rivers, mountains, and other reference points. What is the solution? Well, that may depend upon the person's desire to learn. There may be several ways to go about this. One may consider creating their own map. This obviously will take some time and effort, but the hands-on experience is well worth the effort. Another solution may be to purchase a larger wall map. This will require a dedicated space not only to mount the map, but a place to sit in front of the map while reading and studying. Another answer is to immerse yourself in the study of Bible geography. Every time you read a passage with a reference to a geographical place, stop and look at it on the map. Initially, this will seem tedious and time-consuming, but eventually, like other things, this method becomes easier with use. There are other ways to become familiar with Bible geography, and the aim of these are to help us with a greater understanding of God's Word. And those are our thoughts for today.